It is a blessed Lord's Day today. It is a blessed Lord's Day today. And we are here to rejoice and be glad in our great Savior, Jesus Christ. And one of the things we're glad for is Sam is in the building. <laughs> Let's start mailing Sam a bulletin in the mail so he can read it. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody that's here on time. <laughs> All right, uh, let's pray. Father, thank you for blessing us with this day. and Please continue to bless us as we hear the music and the word, Father, that it may come from you and that we may take it to heart, Father. Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you would like to get Sam a birthday present, when's your birthday? Christmas. Give him an early birthday present. A warm clock. <laughs> But he did, he did forget to, he welcomed everybody, but he did forget that we have a guest with us today. And so, Sam, if you would get a guest pack. Sam will work him extra hard now. <laughs> I've got him, and I'm not going to turn him loose. On your left behind Bill Boston is a young lady that Ron Barber ran into, and she didn't get hurt. Can you imagine an insurance man running into you and you don't get hurt? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. Yes, sir. Amen. The Lord is indeed good, and may we worship Him in truth and in spirit and open our hearts and minds to Him. I'm going to ask that we, before Billy and Cheryl come, that we have just a moment of solitude and silence before the Lord. So let's just take a moment. Close your eyes and see in your heart's mind Jesus high and lifted up in all of His glory, in all of His grace. Sister Cheryl, Brother Billy, if you would come. Today we continue our steps to the cross by relighting our first two passion candles, the candle of triumphant, which reminds us of Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. Marking the beginning of Passion Week. Our second Passion Candle is the Candle of Authority, which reminds us of Jesus' authority over the temple worship as the long way of Messiah. On Tuesday, Jesus returns to the temple in Jerusalem and personally confronts the authorities and defends his claims to be the Messiah. Today, we buy our third Passion Candle to remind us of Jesus, of Jesus' authenticity as the long-awaited Messiah. <clears throat> the occasion for the religious leaders' questions was Jesus' unorthodox action the previous day when he cleared the temple with authority. Mark's Gospel gives the most detailed account of this day of controversy. And they came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him. And they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? Mark 11, 27-28 The day ends with Jesus explaining the symbolic significance 
of the cursed fig tree as he pronounced a curse on the city and announced that the kingdom would be taken away from the nation. <clears throat> then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do, for they preach, but do not practice. Matthew 23, <coughs> 1-3. On the return to Bethany, the disciples were loaded with questions. Jesus steps at the Mount of Olives, overlooking the temple, and gives the Olivet Discourse. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, what will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, sorry, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Luke 21, 5 through 9. It was a detailed prophecy largely about the coming destruction of Jerusalem and the temple due to the rejection of Jesus as Messiah by the Jewish authorities. After an exhausting day of controversy, Jesus more than likely spent Wednesday resting and visiting with his intimate friends in Bethany. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you that your spirit bears witness with our spirit that Jesus is the Messiah. We praise him as the Savior of our lives and humbly submit his authority as King and Lord. Bless us with your spirit and love. We ask this in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like for you to take your Bibles now and open them to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. We have been talking about going and doing likewise and following Jesus. And as part of that, we have been giving you tracts every week. To share with people for you to read and to look into to get in your mind and heart the need of people to be saved we can forget that and to build in our hearts and mind a desire for people to be saved we've talked about the fact that there's none righteous all have sinned None of us are the creatures that Jesus created us to be. We've all come short of his glory and his image because of our sin, how we we're born into sin. And in Romans chapter 1, we see that it's Jesus' right to judge us. Verse 18 says for the, oh, please stand for the reading of God's word. Forgive me. Verse 18 says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, 
so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God, but gave give thanks to Him, or give thanks to Him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up to the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word today to our hearts and minds. May we be convicted of sin of righteousness and judgment today. May your word work in our lives, removing the old man and putting in the character, the nature of our great God through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you'll take your hymnals, but don't pay attention to the bulletin because we changed something this morning. Ms. Shirley Willard is with us today, and this is her last Sunday with us. She is moving in with her daughter, who is making arrangements to help care for her. But that is taking her across the great divide of the Cape Fear River <laughs> to Regalwood. And so I apologize to her, but the last time she was here, she requested a song. And we changed what we were doing, and we didn't sing it. So today we're going to start by singing Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, number 334. So if you take your hymnals and turn to 334, when you find it, you can stand with me. We'll sing all three verses, and this is a great hymn of assurance for us to begin today. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Amen. Praising my Savior all day long. We've got till the sun goes down tonight to praise Jesus. So who'd like to start us off this morning with a word?